In my last video, there was some rattle, some whine, and I thought that it was just the recording because you can't hear it at high bass. Like you literally like almost can't even hear it. But if you turn the bass down a little bit, you can hear it. And I, <laughs> I disassembled my sub, man, and I don't know what is in here that's rattling. This is one of my Sundown, uh, it's the SA-12 old version. There is something in here rattling. I completely disassembled this thing. And I have no idea. I have no idea. I would have to take a hammer and smash this in order to figure out why this thing is rattling. I just have no idea. There's so <laughs> I beat these subs up for like four years on 1200 watts RMS each and they're rated for 750. So I guess it was time to retire this guy and I made a different decision. I thought about buying two more brand new uh, thousand watt rated uh, Sundown SA12s, but here's what I decided on. So this is what I have in my Jeep now. I had to fix the FS parameter, it was a little off, so this is gonna look a little different than my first video, but this is basically what I have, and or had. I was not excited about having to spend $750 on two brand new Sundowns, and I thought, well, wait a minute, isn't there like a budget king of subwoofers that everybody raves about called Scar Audio? So let me see what they have to provide. And I looked at their EVL series, which seems to be a direct competitor with the Sundown SA12s. So I punched it in, and this is what it gave me. Now, I do not have a high confidence level in the parameters that SCAR Audio provided on their website. Their CMS number seems way too low for the FS that they provide. And I found a different website with an FS that does line up with the CMS level that they have on their website, but not with their own FS. I, what I think happened was they had a version that was a 40 hertz FS, and they didn't cha they changed that, but they didn't change some of the other numbers. Whatever the case, I'm, I don't have a super high confidence level in, in the parameters that they gave me, so I, this is the best approximation I can make. And it looks good, right? It looks real good. Up here, it's going to be a little high, and this could be a problem. It could mess with the frequency curve. It, it could make it overpowering at this level. But if I add displacement to the front chamber, for example, bring it down from 3 cubic feet to 2 cubic feet, it looks a lot better. So if it's a problem, I can always add displacement. Now the EVL series has a four millimeter higher X max than the Sundown SA12s do. And a lot of people think, oh, that's gonna add more SPL, right? It's gonna push more air. No, not really, because that's a function of VAS. It's a function of, again, CMS, box size. There's a lot of different factors that go into that. So it's gonna be about the same air velocity, about the same, kind of in the danger zone, getting close to it, but they're flared ports. So I think it's gonna be okay. Um, I'm excited. I, I don't know that my, frequency curve my SPL I, I don't know that this is all going to match because I don't have high confidence in the parameters I wish scar audio would fix that give better parameters um so we'll see we're going to find out so here they are the two scar audio EVL 12 D4s uh next to the old revision sundown SA12 revision 3 this is the 750 watt version the first thing that pops out is the surround on this is way beefier than the Sundown. I don't know if you could see, but yeah, it is really beefy. The surround on this is extremely impressive. Um, the instruction manual said that these are FS of 40 hertz. I'm not going to get it back into it, but it. come on, Scar. Can you please just give me good parameters? Um, that's my one complaint. But I like the way that they look. Um, the all black with the red spider. Another thing I really like is that these terminals, they look like they're like four gauge. When you look on the sundown, they're like 10 gauge. Now that doesn't seem like a big deal, but if you're trying to parallel the voice coils on the subwoofer, you're going to have a pain trying to do it. At least I did. Um, trying to stuff two 10 gauges in there. Never mind eight gauge. So with these, you can parallel your uh, voice coils on the subwoofer with with no problem so i really like that uh tinsel leads are stitched into the spider which i would expect um overall i just really like the way that they look i hope that they're fs32 like they said on their website and not 40 like i found elsewhere and in the manual who knows good luck <laughs> i guess we'll see um but they look really nice i can't wait to get them in and see what they sound like so here they are, the two SCAR audios, the uh, EVL-12s all loaded up, looking pretty good. 
Um, in case you haven't seen my previous video, I have the two 5-inch ports in the front chamber tuned to 50 hertz, and the three 4-inch ports in the rear chamber tuned to 30 hertz. Alright, so we're inside the cab. Um, I've already played these, and I do want to say that the low-end extension is a little bit better than the Sundowns. Um, those Sundowns got beat up, though, so <laughs> I don't know if that's a fair comparison. Uh, the high-end towards the 50 hertz range... I don't know if it's because they're not broken in yet. Scar Audio does recommend a uh, break-in. I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but it's not quite as impressive um, as the Sundowns. But that might be because the suspension is super, super stiff on these subs. But let's, let, let's hear how they play. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. It sounds really good. Um, I would say for the price, you're getting sundown equivalent performance. The 50 hertz range, for some reason, doesn't quite seem to have it, but that might be due to the uh, break-in of the subs. But uh, yeah, man, I think the Scar Audio EVL12s put the sundown, uh, give the sundown SA12s a, a run for their money for sure.